I'm Amy Cherry. This local news is a service of Flagler County's Toyota dealer, Beaver Toyota, here to wow ya. Flagler County Commissioner Joe Mullins is backpedaling on his strict stance against the homeless after sitting through a presentation in St. Augustine, which has one of the harshest anti-panhandling rules in the state. Mullins says he no longer wants to enact a panhandling ordinance. The chair of Flagler's Public Safety Committee says panhandling isn't the county's biggest problem, and he'd rather find solutions that focus on public intoxication and urination, with some limitations around businesses and schools. But he says no restrictions should go into effect until a solution and help is offered to those experiencing homelessness. That help is contingent on a partnership with a shelter in Volusia County, wherein Flagler would invest $200,000 in exchange for 10 beds, devoted specifically to Flagler's homeless population. Critics of the plan in Volusia say they shouldn't have to deal with Flagler's problems. This portion of Flagler's Morning News brought to you by the Daytona Beach International Airport, Delta Airlines nonstop to Atlanta, and now nonstop service to New York City via American Airlines. As the population continues to expand in Palm Coast, one local official says development will as well. John Arking has the details. Wynne Newingham is the head of innovation and economic growth for the city of Palm Coast. She says while that's a mouthful, it perfectly describes what she's tasked with accomplishing. I always like to say, too, it's a really fancy title for just giving back to the community and connecting all our partners and just bringing everyone together and, and hoping for the best. But I still put one pant leg on, just like everybody else, one leg at a time, and uh, just excited to be here and, and be a part of the city. Newingham says that one area for sure that will see positive change is the Matanzas Woods Parkway interchange. I mean, it's definitely going to be a developed area. I mean, you may have heard conversations with city council. They want to you know, bring in some retail, some commercial development. Our city is growing, you know, no matter what pocket you look at that's underdeveloped or needs to be developed. But the amenities that are coming in are definitely to serve that need. Newingham says the population in the Palm Coast area has doubled in the last 10 years and will continue to grow. So the current infrastructure will not support the future. From the WNCF Newsroom, I'm John Arkin. What's the future of public transportation in Palm Coast? Mayor Melissa Holland says it is just that, in the future. She said that right now, public transportation does not make sense. The problem with that is to have a fixed route, a fixed transportation route, when we're not a dense community, we're sort of spread very widely, 89.8 square miles. It's not even cost effective. It would bankrupt this city if we were to lay out a fixed route plan. Holland said that there are areas that could be developed into dense communities and developers could put in public transportation, but that, she said, for Palm Coast as a city is still in the future. You can hear the entire interview on the Free For All Friday podcast on the Flagler Radio app. Download the Flagler Radio app today. From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm Rich Carroll. If your home was seriously damaged in Hurricane Irma, you could be eligible for a buyout. Flagler County Emergency Management Chief Jonathan Lord says the initiative, which has strict requirements, is being offered through the State Department of Economic Opportunity under the Rebuild Florida program. It allows those people who would be willing to sell their property back to government, and then that property, if it qualifies, would then become open space or stormwater management property. In perpetuity. The deadline to apply is September 5th. A local nonprofit is expanding its offerings. Tony Magoo has more. Teen Zip Flight founder Jack Howell and executive director Rick Lehman made the announcement at their annual hangar party. Teens in Flight is an organization that helps children of our military, first responders, those at risk, and those financially underserved get a pilot's license. And where can you take this? When you walk into Emory Riddle with a pilot's license, you've just saved $35,000 right off the top. Training additional pilots will help serve a growing need, Lehman said. Experts are predicting shortages of as many as 475,000 pilots over the next 10 years. How do folks find out more about your programs, Rick? You can reach us on our Facebook page or you can call me direct at 904-814-3803. For Flagler's Morning News, I'm Tony Magoo. And now you're up to date on Flagler's Morning News. I'm Amy Cherry.